<laughs> hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Today it's about, well, what price is greatness? You know, probably more than any other question I ever get asked is, I want something really good. I want something great, but, but, but I don't have a lot of money to spend. It comes up all the time. And I've discussed a lot of these speakers that I'm about to name right now and electronics before. But I'm focusing on this question of what price greatness. The choices I'm going to put forth right now, these are the ones that I think uh, stand out in my recent experiences, mostly recent experiences, of reviewing things. Now I will start with a speaker that I've mentioned many, many, many times before the MagnaPan LRS. It's $650 a pair. It is made in the US for those who care. Uh, it is an incredibly transparent speaker. It is an amazingly open sounding speaker. It's an amazingly refined sounding speaker. But it's, it's transparency and palpability are just there's nothing, there's nothing ever been like that for $650. It's just not possible. So it's not the most dynamic speaker. You, it's, a sh it's only four feet tall. If you stand up, the sound changes. It has to be three feet away from the wall behind it, and it likes high current amplifiers. So it may be in you know very affordable range by order file standards, but it's a demanding speaker. Okay, next up is the ELAC Unify UB5 stand mount speaker. It's a three-way design with a coaxial mid-range tweeter. Of course, I will list specifications and links to my reviews and manufacturers in the description below this video. But the ELAC, when driven with a very capable amplifier, just more or less the equivalent to the LRS, that speaker will just blow your mind in, it, in its imaging, in its clarity, in its bass capabilities for a small speaker. It's really, really good, but it's really, really demanding. And no, it doesn't need to be three feet away from the wall like the, like the MagnaPan, but you've got to give it some space. If you jam it up against the wall, you're going to miss a lot of what this speaker is capable of. Before I forget to mention, the LRS's bigger brother, the 0.7 from MagnaPan, uh, that's $1,400. That speaker is, it, it's not quite as pure and transparent as the LRS, but it's a bigger speaker and it sounds bigger. It makes more bass. Uh, I like that speaker a lot and would certainly qualify as, as greatness for, in this case, between that speaker and an amplifier in a $2,500 system. Then there is the uh, Ohm Walsh 1000 which is an omnidirectional speaker, just, again, does not sound like a box speaker because the sound is radiated in a near 360 degree pattern. So it doesn't sound like a box. It's, and one of the great things about these Ohm speakers is they are 1000% audiophile speakers, but they sound really good near walls. That's a very unusual characteristic, but they absolutely do. Then comes the Vandersteen Model 1CI. Now, the Vandersteen 1 goes way back, probably to the early 80s. It doesn't look gigantically different. The basic idea of the speaker is not that different. But it's a box speaker, but behind the grill, as you can see in this picture, it's an open baffle sort of speaker. The, the woofer is in a box. The tweeter is uh, in an open position, let's just say. Uh, behind the grill. So it, it, it's just a classic, classic design. It still sounds great. It's $14.95 a pair. It's made in the U.S. I just love that speaker. Now for easy to drive speakers, well, the, uh, the choice is obvious. The Klipsch RP600M, my speaker of the year for 2019. It's a horn speaker, um, just has incredible dynamic capabilities, not just in the soft to loud, but the soft, you can lis listen to the 600M at very quiet levels and still hear, the, the music still sounds alive. It's just amazing in that way. 
its imaging, at least for a horn speaker, is really good. It's not a bassy speaker uh, and probably sounds better near walls. I never actually tried it, but because it's a horn, it can get away with near wall placement better than a typical box speaker. Oh, oh and speaking of dynamics, I can't leave out the Zoo Audio Dirty Weekend. And that's a, more or less a full range single driver with a separate tweeter about, below it. But that tweeter comes in, I think it 10K. So it's not functioning like a typical tweeter. Most of the dr sound comes from that one 10 inch full range driver. There's no crossover on that driver. It's a paper driver. It's just amazing what I've heard Dirty Weekends do. It is, it is greatness. And that speaker is around $1,000 made in the US. Just a stunning piece of work. I, I almost forgot this one. This one came in late. So I gotta throw it in the list here. The Golden Ear Technology BRX stand mount speaker, bookshelf speaker. Uh, you know, it's a, it looks like a little speaker, pretty little speaker, but it's uh, capabilities in terms of imaging, space, depth is phenomenal. Great focus, beautiful mid range, very generous low end for a speaker of its size. Great little speaker, $1,600 a pair definitely deserves a spot on this list. So now I'm going to talk about electronics. And uh, I just referred to it a little bit ago, the Emotiva TA100 stereo integrated amp, $399. Uh, it can drive four ohm speakers. It has digital inputs. It, it's got a lot of features. It's got subwoofer outputs and I think preamp outputs. It's a very versatile product. It's beautifully made. It is a class AB design. It is not a class D amplifier. Really rare for this kind of money, $399. Okay, so then the next is the Rogue Sphinx 3, which I just reviewed recently. I reviewed the Sphinx 2 and the Sphinx 1, but they are class D designs, but they all also use tubes in the preamp section. And uh, it's, it's beautiful, it's an elegant design. It's, I'm not a, generally a fan of Class D, but this, is, this rises above what Class D usually sounds like. Okay, it doesn't have a forum rating, but I feel pretty confident that it can drive the Magnapans and the ELAC UB5 just fine and it is made in the US. I keep mentioning this because to some people out there in audio land, they, they care whether it's made in the US. So if it is, I mention it. Okay, then there's the Yamaha S801 stereo integrated amplifier. It's much more of a mass market product. It's about $900 in the US right now. You can buy it on Amazon. It's, it's more like a mainstream design, but it actually sounds really good. So I don't have any hesitation recommending it, and I believe it can drive its, it has a weird way of describing its uh, power ratings, but it does say it can drive, I think it's, a, it's saying that you should check, but pretty sure it says it can drive four ohm speakers, just dandy. Oh, the other thing, I, oh, I almost forgot, the Yamaha has a loudness control. Oh, I love loudness controls. Loudness controls, if you don't know what that means, means it's a knob, and you can bring up the bass and treble gently for late night listening level, just by the turn of this knob. It's variable. And uh, it's a great, if you listen a lot late at night, you'll understand why loudness controls used to be on everything. And then they sort of faded away as people tried to make equipment without tone controls and that sort of thing. But the Yamaha has tone controls. It also has a loudness control. So great for late night listening. Of course, the Outlaw Audio RR2160, which is about $900. These prices are fluctuating for, I think, obvious reasons. Um, it's a powerhouse. This thing has lots of power. It's a Class AB amplifier. It definitely drives four-ohm speakers without, without raising a sweat at all. Uh, it's got um, subwoofer outputs. It has bass management, analog bass management in it. It's, the, the feature, it's got a lot of features in there, very intelligently laid out features. And it's just really, really good. So 
Um, I put it up against some of the ones I just mentioned that are there are more like like the row integrated. So there you have it. Uh, a, a greatness is attainable for not insane amounts of money. Now, of course, if you want to spend more, and I know a lot of you say, twenty five hundred dollars. I want to spend eight thousand dollars. I want to spend ten thousand dollars. Go right ahead. But what that extra money will buy you is the ability to play louder, to make more bass, to fill larger spaces, to rock out more. Yes. But this video is not about that per se. This video is about quality. What levels of quality can you get between $800 and $2,500? That's what I'm stressing this time out. Uh, I will gladly review much more expensive and rave about much more expensive products when they deserve it. But my goal this time is keeping a lid on the price. What say you, dear viewer? What do you think? Have I missed something obvious out there in terms of electronics or speakers that would fit in this, in this thing that I'm trying to put together today? Tell me in the comments section, please. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Thank you so much for being here. If you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. Uh, by the way, you should check out, I've gotten this far, you should check out the Patreon. You can find that at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash audiophiliac. And if you couldn't write that down fast enough, I will link to it directly below. You can follow me on Twitter, that's free, at audiophiliacman, on Instagram at steve.guttenberg. And while you're here, check out the playlist. There's playlists for speaker reviews and electronics reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews and interviews with so many super interesting people who are famous designers and just plain folk audiophiles, all chock full in the playlist. I think my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.